Uh, my presentation today is titled Tourism Development as Greek Tragedy. So I want to briefly go through a piece of research that we did that combined these two concepts of tourism development and elements of Greek tragic theatre. So what did we actually do? We found and analysed using a range of different qualitative analysis techniques 10 cases where a tourism proposal had gone wrong. And our definition of gone wrong or gone bad is that it both created significant negative impacts on the destination, on the host destination, community, environment, economy. It also had negative impacts for stakeholders beyond the tourism destination. And in addition, we identified cases where the tourism proposal or development, the commercial activity itself also failed. So these were cases where it was very clear that it was um, a failure on all dimensions. And what we did was we asked if it was possible to use the elements and narrative structure of classical Greek tragic theatre as an analytical framework. And our hope was that by using this framework, we would be able to identify whether or not there is a consistent pattern that underlies these examples where tourism development goes so badly wrong, but also whether it would be able to give us some different insights into the processes and factors that contribute to negative impacts of tourism for host uh, destinations. Why? Why would we choose to do that? Well, firstly, because this notion that Greek tragic theatre can be used as an analytical tool uh, has been done in other areas of policy planning and governance. So when we look in the broader literature on trying to understand, particularly in the international arena, aspects of international development policy, aspects of international relations, aspects of decisions about whether or not to intervene in the politics of other countries, these are all areas that have used Greek tragic theatre as an analytical framework and have found it quite useful. But secondly, Greek tragedy, classical or ancient Greek tragedies, were actually used as a tool for public debate. So they were a mechanism for public engagement in and provided a safe arena for criticism of current political decisions in the various Greek uh, democracies in, at that time. So it seemed like it was a use, a particularly appropriate tool to connect to these issues around the consequences for destination communities of poor tourism development policies or planning activities. In the larger paper, we actually talk about the overall sequence of activities in these 10 cases and how well that fits the narrative structure that was uh, common to all Greek trage tragedies. And we concluded that yes, there is a consistent set of actions, but in particular, there were four concepts from ancient Greek tragic theater that seemed to apply particularly well to these 10 cases of tourism development gone bad. And the first of these is the concept of a moral dilemma. All Greek tragedies, are centred on a single moral dilemma. The hero or heroine, depending on, on the particular play, has to make a decision. And in that decision, no one in the play is all good and no one is all bad, and no one begins with evil intentions. So there is no one who is characterised by seeking self-aggrandisement or personal gain. So unlike some more contemporary approaches to drama and theatre, it is not the case that this is a simple conflict between good and bad or between someone being selfish and someone with broader motives. What is really at core is the decision maker has a clash between two conflicting sets of obligations and no matter what their choice, someone will suffer and someone will lose and yet Either choice can be seen as appropriate depending on your culture, values, the time scale that you're looking at and or which responsibilities those to your immediate family, to a more immediate group or a larger society are seen as more important. So that's important to remember that in many of these tourism developments, while there was considerable conflict around the development, it was clear that both sides saw benefits from proceeding or from impeding the development. 
what Greek tragic theatre really focused on then was whether or not the key character, the hero or heroine, chose to fall prey to this concept of hubris or chose to follow an honourable path. And in the next slide, we'll talk about what honour meant in this particular context. But hubris was defined as overconfidence, excessive pride, the belief that you've been successful somewhere else and that success was the result of your own individual competence and capability and often a failure to recognise that it was actually the circumstances that you found yourself in. And this excessive belief in your own abilities means that the hero or heroine could lose touch with what was really going on around them. And when they were challenged to reconsider their position, would very quickly fall into a you are either with me or against me kind of mind frame. And that was very evident in our 10 uh, tourism development case studies. So very quickly a discussion about whether or not this was an appropriate form of tourism. It devolved very quickly from a sort of a, an attempt to discuss the relative merits to examine both the positive and negative impacts into a you are either for it or against it that divided the community and contributed in part to the ongoing challenges. But what was especially important was that hubris was evident in the behaviour of everyone involved, it was not limited just to people who uh, had presented the tourism development, it was certainly also evident in the behaviour of different groups opposed to the tourism development. But what was especially important was it was evident in the belief by the decision makers. So the decision makers were nearly always some government department or government sponsored group and a belief that somehow a rational decision process that would be dependent on scientific research would generate an obvious and correct choice. So embedded in all of these tourism development cases was this reliance on some sort of, if you like, amoral decision process, the notion that it's a rational decision that the gathering of sufficient evidence would make the choice very clear. And what was happening here was people were failing to see it as a moral or ethical choice. And in ignoring that dimension, um, fell into this self-delusion that if only we could gather enough evidence, the obvious choice would be in would become clear and therefore the responsibility of making a choice would be removed from the decision makers. Now, Greek tragic theatre said the way to avoid that is to pursue an honourable path. And for them, honour meant acknowledging the suffering of others. And it actually was very clear that it's important to take responsibility for the consequences of one's actions, intended or otherwise, and including those that could not have been foreseen. So Greek tragic theatre actually says, regardless of how clever you are, regardless of how much information you gather, regardless of your success in previous areas, areas, these kinds of moral dilemmas are going to have unintended consequences and consequences that cannot be foreseen and someone will suffer. But what was important is that our hero or heroine actually share that suffering. And that's something that the political analysts who've used this framework elsewhere have noted is removed from many of our current decision-making processes in the fields of policy and politics. The last concept is that of the chorus. The chorus were very important in Greek tragic theatre. It was a group of, of actors who provided information about the events taking place off stage. And many of the core events did indeed take place elsewhere. So they reported on what was happening but they also made and explained moral judgments and they provided a guide to the audience on how to evaluate the actions of the main characters. And so because this was an opportunity to publicly debate, present criticism of and consider contemporary political decisions, our playwrights often chose the chorus from groups who either did not have a formal role in Greek democracy, so in other words their voice would not be heard elsewhere, or who represented those most likely to suffer the consequences of the particular moral dilemma that the play was about. And so the chorus could often be made up of slaves, foreigners, young people, women and older citizens who had no other formal mechanism in, in this form to present their opinions on what was going on. So the whole notion of the Greek tragic theatre was 
a way to publicly consider and debate and criticise political decisions. So where does this take us? Well, it takes us to what's called a tragic vision. And in more recent times, the word tragic has, has come to be associated with sort of unbearable sadness associated with a, an event beyond someone's control. But in its original notion, it was this recognition, a tragic uh, situation was one where no matter what choice you made, there would be suffering. So what does a tragic vision tell us for tourism development policies and planning processes? That in fact, these are ethical and moral dilemmas and simply trying to gather more and more information and extending the debate to more and more people will not in and of itself solve them. It also suggests we need to learn a form of public discussion that is not a debate. We need to find a way to discuss controversial and complex decisions, especially those about major tourism developments, where people do not have to actually take a position of being either for or against it in which we can openly discuss the full range of potential and actual impacts. It's a suggestion that decision makers need to avoid hubris and embrace honour. And that means they have to actually acknowledge that someone will suffer and be prepared to take responsibility for that suffering. And to do that, we need to have and we need to pay attention to a chorus. This area of public engagement in, in tourism development has been long discussed in the tourism literature. And the focus has been more and more on how do we get more and more and wider ranges of people engaged in the process and a recognition that this is very difficult to do in practice. By taking a tragic vision, we actually shift the emphasis in public engagement, not so much from hearing from everyone, but instead to find ways to make sure that we actually listen to those voices that are least likely to be heard elsewhere and those people who are most likely to suffer the negative consequences from whichever decision is made. So that actually gives us a new way to think about public engagement in tourism development policy and planning. And finally, we need to reconsider who we teach about tourism governance. One of the things that was very clear from the case studies of the tourism development was that most of the decision makers had very limited understanding of tourism and therefore were unlikely to gather the information they needed to actually make an assessment of potential impacts. So we need to find a way to spread a, an understanding of tourism as a global system of production and consumption to those people engaged in policy and planning decisions around tourism. Thank you for that.